It's time once again to worship with your friends at Grace United Methodist Church. Grace is located in the heart of Decatur, Illinois at 901 North Main Street. Our Sunday worship service is a traditional style service at 9.30 a.m. Prepare your hearts now to worship with our friendly and caring Grace family. We welcome you. Let us worship together. Good morning, friends. Welcome to worship at Grace United Methodist Church. I'm so glad that you're here this morning. What a beautiful morning. I don't know. It's been, been kind of a strange morning. I've been asked more times by more people than usual whether the worship service is going to be over on time or not today. I... I it, it took me a little while to figure out until I asked the Wentworths whether they had come dressed for Halloween or what the, what the occasion was that they were, they were dressed in those colors, and, and then it all came together for me. <laughs> ah. Oh, what a fun time of the year, though. What a wonderful time. Well, we're so glad that you're here, and... Um, so glad that you can make yourself at home. There, in the, addition to your bulletin, you'll find um, that there is an insert for Easter flower order. These are due today. This is the last day for these, so please uh, make it a point if you want to get those in to do that today. Also, uh, with your things is a card that is, uh, looks like this. This is an invitation for Easter. This is intended to be, this is, comes courtesy of the outreach team, this is intended to be uh, a, a way for you to invite others, others so others can be blessed on, um, on Easter Sunday as well. And so take that and give that away to someone who you would like to invite to come. Well, we have several things coming up soon that I wanted to mention. Um, we ha are having the Good News uh, Club Awards Night on March 31st uh, at 5.30 here in the sanctuary. And um, so you are welcome to come to that. You'll see some promo uh, flyers up around the church. We invite you to come and to see what the kids have been doing and, and, uh, and have a bit of a, an experience of that. That also will be live on Facebook, I believe. Isn't that right? Yes. I see Valerie shaking her head, yes. Uh, and then the next night uh, is Monday, Thursday, and we'll have worship here in the sanctuary at 6.30 uh, p.m. I invite you to come for that. On Easter, which is on the 4th, that's two weeks from today, we're going to do the first service at 6.30 outside. And so if there are some of you who are watching uh, today, watching us live, and and you've been reluctant to come because we're indoors, then you can be part of that service outdoors. And we invite you to come at 6.30 for a sunrise service, and then we'll be here in the sanctuary at 9.30, uh, and that service will also be on Facebook Live. Um, let's see. One other thing I wanted to mention. We've had, uh, we've had some folks that have indicated an interest in joining in membership in the congregation, and they happen to be available during the day for a daytime membership class uh, this coming Wednesday, uh, the 24th, uh, from 9 until 11 here at the church. And if you would like to be part of that, would you just let Beth or myself know that, um, and we will be glad to include you in that. And if you would like to take the step of, of uh, membership, of, or at least even just check out what membership would be, but you're not available uh, during the day, let us know that as well, and we'll find an evening time uh, to meet with you and um, get that underway. So wanted to make that invitation to any of you who would like to be part of it. Now, um, you've already discovered this, those of you who have been here, but um, we're, going to, we're going to greet one another, and then the choir is going to sing, This is the Day, and you're welcome to join in. We've added the words up on the screen, so if you want to sing along. So, but before you do that, before we sing, just turn and wave to your neighbor. Look to the left, look to the right. Say hello if you can. Just say good morning. And uh, so, glad to, so glad to have you all here. And then you're welcome to join in singing.
All right, let's stand and we'll join together in the uh, call to worship responsively. We gather to meet with the living God. We have come to listen to him in his word, to seek his face and to worship him. Our Lord Jesus is the beginning of all things. He is our life. In him we become and live. Our God is with us. By his spirit he is in us and knows all our thoughts. Search our hearts, O God, God, as as we we worship you. you. Test Test us and and know our anxious thoughts. thoughts. Train Train our minds to conform to the mind of Christ, that that we may find our peace in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So the mind of Christ, we're training our minds to have the mind of Christ, and therefore we're going to sing Jesus, the very thought of thee. Let's sing together. seated and we'll take a few minutes as we prepare to pray together uh, congregationally for you to have some personal time for prayer um, as Arliss plays. So we'll join our hearts together in prayer to the Lord. Heavenly Father, so many times we come to this time of prayer with little expectancy. Guard us from routines and spiritual lethargy that would shut out or shut down your power and love. We know that your thoughts are not our thoughts, nor are your ways our ways. But we are here and are prepared to learn from you. We come seeking you with all our hearts. We come calling on you since you are near. Thank you that your desire is never to be separated from us. Teach us to wait expectantly before you until the thin wall that separates us from you is breached and your Holy Spirit comes rushing into us with all your love and strength and holiness. Show us how to wait with our wills ready to do your will. Prepare us for what you desire from us so that life is never routine or dull or uneventful. In the name of Jesus, we bring before you our loved ones who need you this day. We bring before you the damaged and hurting parts of this world. We pray for those places where violence has become the norm, where people, especially children, find themselves in harm's way through no fault of their own. Tenderize our hearts toward those who need to know they are loved by you. Fill us with boldness and confidence in Christ to make daily sacrifices of love. Lift us into your presence during this hour so that the seed of your word planted within will strengthen us for holy living. As we exalt in your presence and give thanks for the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ, may our hearts be transformed and our spirits ready to enter into the week ahead as your servants, seeking, finding, and living out your will. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, 
the one who loves us eternally and taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. hymn of preparation that we're about to, about to sing is actually a, gives us a taste of the scripture that's going to follow. Um, it's based upon that scripture in Isaiah 55. So I invite you to stand and let's prepare our hearts for the word.
We'll hear the scripture today from Isaiah 55, verses 6 through 13, which says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them, let, let them return to the Lord and he will have mercy on them and to our God for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth, and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper, and instead of briars the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign that will endure forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Good morning. Will you bow with me for prayer? Lord Jesus, we pray, send now your Holy Spirit among us that you may teach us in your word. Enable all our ears to hear you and enable my lips to deliver your message faithfully and fruitfully. Make your word a swift word passing from our ears to our hearts and from our hearts into our lives and into our conversations. As the rain returns not empty, so neither may your word, but accomplish that for which it is sent here among us today. O oh Lord, hear us and search our hearts. O oh Lord, forgive us and correct us, and do so for your blessed Son's sake in whose most powerful name we pray. Amen. Well, our sermon series, Gardening for Growth, continues today as we get into the weeds. <laughs> Anyone who has done even a little bit of gardening knows weeding is a never-ending task that is best kept at bay by daily, a daily tour through the garden spaces armed with a trowel. The trowel is our tool today. <laughs> for followers of Jesus, we must daily weed out the sin that so easily entangles, as the author writes in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. So in that first point on your outline, daily is the important word. Weeding the garden of our souls requires daily attention. Now, you may be anticipating, and we could talk about all kinds of different sins as the weeds in which we get ourselves entangled in life, and we could talk about all kinds of strategies for rooting out those weeds, but that really is not where I want to focus our attention this morning. I'd rather get to the root of the problem just as we need to dig out weeds by the root to eradicate them from our gardens. So I'm going to use the thistle in, uh, in order to illustrate my point. I, don't, I told you a couple of weeks ago about that how, home that I bought from a landscaper that had this huge, well-prepared garden full of rich soil. You might remember that. Well, the thing I discovered that very first summer I lived there was not only did it have this beautiful black soil, it also had a lovely stand of thistle, a large stand of healthy thistle. It was like this, but it was all over my, my garden. Now I cannot imagine that the owner, a wonderful landscaper, had actually planted thistle intentionally <laughs> but it came up everywhere that first year. Now, I don't mind thistle out in the field like that, where the finches can enjoy it, but I will not tolerate thistle in my garden spaces. The problem with thistle 
is that it grows really low to the ground and it can hide behind the taller plants until suddenly this head shoots up full of seeds just about ready to burst open and cast its seeds all over the creation. Thistle seems to take root anywhere a seed lands. Those seeds are so hardy, they can grow on rocky ground. Out at our place in Missouri, we have thistle. Or they can grow in clay soil. But if you give them the opportunity to take root in dark, rich, black soil, oh boy, they are productive, more productive, sending out seeds in all directions. Now, the only way to get rid of a garden full of thistles, I found, is to dig out the plants at the very root before they get a chance to produce those heads and scatter their seeds. So I spent much of my weeding that first year in that particular home digging out thistles. If I didn't get the whole root the first time, well, that silly plant would come up again, and I would find it in the exact same place later on in the summer, getting ready to cast its seeds out for another season of thistle production. I learned that if I missed even one plant and those seeds got loose, the next year I would have just as big a crop of thistles to dig out. Well, I want you to think about those seeds that a thistle plant casts as the sin that so easily entangles. Our question then for this morning is, what is the thistle plant in our lives that produces those sin seeds? What's the plant that needs to be dug out at the root? Well, will you read with me, you'll have it on the screen, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So the plant that can produce the seeds of sin is our thought life. That's on your outline, our thought life. Thoughts can be good, and they can produce good seeds, of course, but thoughts can also be bad and produce the seeds of sin. This passage I just read in Isaiah contrasts God's thoughts with our human thoughts. Now, the psalmist writes in Psalm 139, verse 17, How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Well, we know from the Gospels that Jesus could read the thoughts of those around him. He knew exactly what they were thinking, and he would address those thoughts right out in the open, right? Our God knows our every thought. He knows the words on our tongues before we ever speak them, right? But for the psalmist to suggest that he knows the thoughts of God, maybe that seems a little presumptuous to us. Yet, we can know the very thoughts of God because he does not keep them hidden from us, but he sends them out, sends out his thoughts like good seed, as Isaiah writes in verses 10 and 11. Like the rain and the snow, he sends his thoughts out. As the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth, and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. God does not keep his thoughts hidden, but has made them clearly known in his word. God does not keep his thoughts hidden. He wants us to know his thoughts, and he's made them clearly known in his word. We can know God's thoughts because he scatters those thoughts throughout the world like good seeds through his word written in the scriptures, through his word made flesh in Jesus, through his word proclaimed by the prophets and priests down through the ages and right up to our day today. 
Verses 10 and 11 in our text this morning say that God sends his thoughts out through his word. He sends them like seeds scattered in the wind so that the word bears fruit, achieving his desires and his purpose of redemption. God makes his desire perfectly known to us in the most famous of all Bible passages, and you can probably even recite it with me. I bet you know it. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. Do you hear it? He sent out the Word made flesh in Jesus, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. His desire is for the good of all who will come to him by faith in Jesus. Whoever, anyone, everyone, whoever believes in Jesus, the Word made flesh, the Savior and the King over all the earth, whoever believes and trusts in him will not perish, but will live with our God for all eternity. What a beautiful desire and a beautiful thought that is, a thought God has made perfectly known to us. Every desire, every thought in God's mind, every desire of his heart are for our good and for our redemption in Jesus, that no one would perish but come to know their life in him, fullness of life, abundance of life. Isaiah writes, however, that our human thoughts and our human desires are not like God's. His thoughts are not natural to our fallen human nature. That nature tends to desire what we deem is good for us, right? What we think will satisfy us and make our own life more pleasant. Unlike our God who scatters the seed of his thoughts into the world for the good of his whole creation, we keep our human selfish desires hidden away in our thought life until they burst forth in sin. James, the brother of Jesus, wrote in James 1, 14 and 15, each one is tempted when... By his own evil desire, he is dragged away and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. From our very birth, we all have this thistle seed of sin lodged in our souls since the fall of Adam and Eve. That desire for self-satisfaction, self-aggrandizement, self-fulfillment cannot be avoided by any of us born as God's human creation. James says that sin has its roots in our desires. And where do our desires make themselves known to us but in our thoughts? We want something, and so we mull over it. We contemplate it. We think on it until what we want seems most reasonable to us, and we are enticed by our thoughts to act upon the desire. That action is the sin, not necessarily the thought. The thoughts are the plants that begin to spread their roots out and grow the stem that produces the head that eventually casts out the seed of sin. When we know Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we know when our thoughts are leading us astray and away from his ways. How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Listen to that again. How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Our thought life can be our own worst enemy and a tool of the enemy of our souls when we let those thoughts that are not God's thoughts take root 
and take up space in our minds. Have you ever been there? I certainly have. Thank you for the head nod. I appreciate that. I have, in my much younger days, constant contemplation of how lonely I was and how nobody understood me led me to run away from home and into years of great sorrow and struggle. It all started with a thought that led to an action that caused me great sorrow. The problem of thistle-like thoughts does not leave us as we grow older, however. Do you know this to be true? Do you ever nurse a grudge in your heart and in your thoughts and then find that a relationship has been broken by that grudge? Do you let your thoughts of inadequacy or self-condemnation take you into the pit of despair? Do you ever mull over your past or the troubles that you see in the world right now and find anxiety and fear rising up in your soul? Do you think about your bank account a little bit too frequently, that you worry about not having enough, and you find yourself hoarding what you do have and finding that your joy is stolen? Or do you think about the next thing that you want and you freely satisfy that desire without thinking about the neighbor who might be in need? When we know Jesus, those thistle thoughts trouble us and keep us from peace and joy. Like the psalmist said, how long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? Those thoughts are what lead us to speak sinful words, to gossip, and to slander. Those thoughts that are not God's thoughts lead us into sinful action and develop in us sinful attitudes. Those thistle-like thoughts are the weeds that pop up unwanted, uncalled for in the life of a believer, and they must be weeded out in order to get sin under control. So dig them out at the root. Isaiah helps us to know how we get started weeding out those thoughts that are not like God's thoughts. First he writes, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Turn to the Lord and he will have mercy and freely pardon. This is nothing new. You've heard it throughout this whole entire sermon series. I think every week we've probably said this same thing. As we journey through this season of Lent, it is a season for turning from sin and self and turning toward God back to our Lord in repentance. Isaiah says that again. But he adds a couple of things that I want us to see in this text that are important for us to remember in our weeding work. First of all, he says, the time for seeking God will come to an end. This is urgent. God has set a timeline for his return, and then those who have not sought the Lord will not live with him for all eternity. The time for weeding, for turning to him is right now. Second, when we turn to him, God freely pardons us and has mercy on us. He does not have to spend any time contemplating, wrestling with his own thoughts. He knows exactly what he's going to do before we ever turn to him. All of his thoughts are trained on this one purpose of our redemption and our rescue. If one of his human creation turns to him by faith in Jesus, God is right there immediately to extend love and mercy and to give the Holy Spirit to help in this work of weeding, to weed out thistle thoughts. First, seek God, turn to him, and then receive his mercy and his spirit. Now, there are other practical things we can do to weed out those thistle thoughts that lead to sin. 
Hebrews 3, verse 1 says this, Therefore, holy brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, the apostle and high priest whom we confess. To weed out the thistle thoughts, we need to replace them with God's thoughts. You do that first as you fix your thoughts on Jesus. Replace those thistle thoughts. Dig them out and replace them by fixing your thoughts on Jesus. We must keep Jesus ever before us, ever in our minds. We need to get up every single day reminding ourselves in our thoughts and in our prayers that we belong to Jesus. He is yours and you are his. You are his instrument of grace in the world, and he is with you to help you throughout the course of every single day. Remind yourself over and over throughout the day, Jesus is mine and I am his. Say it with me. Jesus is mine and I am his. Jesus is mine and I am his. Say it over and over to yourself throughout every day. Fix your thoughts upon Jesus. Paul also encourages us to train our thoughts in a particular direction in Philippians 4.8, one of my favorite passages. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. To weed out thistle thoughts, we must train our thoughts on the trellis of truth and loveliness. Train your thoughts on the trellis of truth and loveliness. So we have a clematis that climbs up on a trellis in our yard that's it, right there. That's the clematis. And it gets so huge every single summer that it overwhelms that trellis so much that we have to stake it up with a steel rod, with a couple of steel rods, actually. And every year they have to be re-put, you know, because there's rocks in the soil. Anyway, that keeps it from blowing over in the wind. But before it starts climbing, I have to keep the weeds from overtaking the clematis plant at the base of the trellis. We had the property there um, really, I don't know, maybe three or four years before that plant ever really grew. It was there all the time, but there were other things that overtook it and it didn't get going up on its trellis. And so finally, I cleared that space out. I had to clear everything out around it so that it could take root and climb up that trellis. Otherwise, it gets choked out before it gets going. Then as that good and beautiful plant grows, I keep training it on the trellis. Every time I have the opportunity, I have to weave those unwieldy tendrils into the scroll work of the trellis day after day. We must do the same with our thought life. First, we weed out the thoughts that are not God's thoughts, and then we train our minds to continually think the thoughts that are like his, keeping our thoughts fixed on Jesus and training them to grow on the trellis of truth and of loveliness. Paul has another word to say about our thoughts in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. I found there's a lot that the word has to say about our thought life because it's so very important. Here's what Paul says in 2 Corinthians. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And here it is, we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. 
Now I apologize for mixing my metaphors, but friends, we are in a battle. We are waging war against the enemy of our souls who would like nothing better than to use our thought life to distract us from Jesus, to keep us stuck in destructive thought patterns that lead us into sin, to make us ineffective in serving Christ in this world. We wage war differently than the world, says Paul. Our prisoners of war, did you catch it? Our prisoners of war are our very own thoughts. Paul says, take every thought captive to obey Christ. When we recognize a thought that's taking us away from the thoughts of God, we capture it and we turn it toward the truth of God's thoughts. The way we do that is by knowing God's thoughts, knowing God's word written in the scriptures and living in Jesus. He will write his word on our hearts. He will etch it in our minds. But we have to keep reading it We have to keep studying it. We have to keep looking for what it means to obey Christ, to think his lovely thoughts, to think thoughts of his truth and redemption, and to train our minds on that trellis of truth. The word of God is our very best weapon in our warfare and the very best tool we have for weeding out the thistle thoughts that spring up in our minds, unwanted. You know, nobody goes out and plants weeds, right? You don't just, you don't say, oh, I'd love to have some weeds growing over here. Well, it's the same with our thoughts. We don't really have control over the thought that pops up. They just do. They're like weeds. But then we weed them out. Hebrews 4, 12 says this, again, thoughts. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. Here it is. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. We know when our thoughts are not God's thoughts, when we know this word that cuts to the heart of the matter that digs down to the root of the weed. God's word is the very best trowel for digging out the thistle thoughts and for making room for the good seed of God's thoughts. God's word to grow into a beautiful planting of the Lord that then sends out good seeds into the world for the sake of God's mission of salvation. Daily weeding, daily weeding out our thistle thoughts allows the good seed of the word of God to flourish in our souls, producing what God desires to produce in our own hearts and out in the world. So as I wrap up this message today, I want to go back to Isaiah 55 where we began In verses 12 and 13, Isaiah encourages his first readers who will soon be exiled from their land and into captivity in Babylon. He is telling them that there's going to come a day when God will restore them and they will know joy again. Though their sin led them away into exile, God will bring them back as they fix their thoughts on him and fix their hearts on God alone. So as we apply this word to our life today, we can hear God saying that if we will do this work of weeding, weeding out the thistle thoughts, then this is what we will experience. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the pine tree, and instead of the briars the myrtle will grow. 
This will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign that will not be destroyed. Just like a well-weeded and well-tended garden, if you take this message to heart today, if you understand that your thought life is what leads to sin, to the weeds of sin, if you do the weeding work of seeking God, repenting of sin, fixing your thoughts on Jesus, training your mind on the trellis of truth and loveliness, and taking all those thistle thoughts captive to obey Jesus Christ, training your mind on that trellis of truth and loveliness, then your whole perspective will change. You will see life differently. You will see the world differently. You'll see those trees clapping their hands. There will be order and goodness and fruitfulness like a well-watered garden springing forth from your life. You will have joy and peace. Your heart will be changed. Soul deep beauty and strength will be yours for the glory of our Lord in this world and for the scattering of his good seeds, the seed that goes forth from his mouth for the sake of the salvation of all who trust in Jesus. So will you begin that weeding work with me today as together we share in a prayer of confession that you'll find on the screen, I hope. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> all right, let's pray this prayer together. Lord God, we know you desire truth in our inward being and in our innermost thoughts. We confess that we have allowed thistle-like thoughts to take root and lead us into sin. We confess those times when we have nurtured ungodly thoughts by contemplation of sinful desires. You have sent out your light and your truth in the seed of your word. Forgive us for treating your word casually and for spending less time learning your truth than we have spent learning the ways of this world. Remove from us the weeds of unbelief, disobedience, and sinfulness. Make room in our minds and in our hearts for more of you, for your spirit of truth. Fix our thoughts on Jesus and help us, Heavenly Father, to take every thought captive to obey Christ. Teach us to love your word, then grant us wisdom and peace in our innermost thoughts by your Spirit within us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hebrews 13.5 gives us a, an opportunity, as we have every Sunday, to do some trellis training. It's hard for me to say. Trellis training for the truth of God's word. And so here, Hebrews 13.5, and then we'll, we'll move towards that. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, because God has said, never will I leave you, Never will I forsake you. And it's true, God knows us really well. He knows we think a lot about money, we think about the things we have, we worry about whether we have enough or whether we will have enough, and so we, we keep accumulating, and, and that really undercuts the opportunity to be generous. And this scripture gives us that thought, that scripture that we need to hold on to that's repeated in the scripture over and over again. God says, I've got you. I've got you in my hands. I am going to care for you. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. And because we are kept within his hands and within his care, we don't have to be afraid of not having enough. We can trust him for that. So this morning, just do some trellis training. Train your thoughts to think about and to remind yourself God is faithful. He is with me. He will provide everything I need. I can count on him. And then let's give generously to the Lord.
Let's pray. Lord, do teach us. Teach us to trust you. Teach us to discover and live into your will and way. And may that be true even as we offer ourselves and these gifts to you today. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for walking with us. We thank you for surrounding us and caring for us. And Lord, we pray that that would bring great joy to our hearts so that the dry places of our lives might become bubbling springs and that the, the desert places might be filled with oasis times where we experience the fullness of joy and life in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Go now. Um, well watered and ready to do the weeding, armed with the word of God to keep those thoughts trained upon Jesus and on the trellis of truth. Go to scatter the good seeds of the word of God. His purpose, his desire for the salvation and the redemption of all the earth. May it be so. Go in the love of God and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit to honor and lift up the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
Thanks for participating in this worship service direct from the sanctuary of Grace United Methodist Church in Decatur, Illinois. This program is a gift to you and is made possible through gifts and prayers of the Grace Congregation. We'd love to hear from our viewers. Sit down and write us or email us a letter this week. Just direct your correspondence to Rev. Sig Bjorglund, care of Grace United Methodist Church, 901 North Main Street, Decatur, Illinois, 62521. That address again, Sig Bjorglund, care of Grace United Methodist Church, 901 North Main Street, Decatur, Illinois, 62521.